What's up guys, welcome to the Lawrence Like Hoop NBA show. I'm your host Lawrence and today we got some news to talk about. First, a trade went down last night between the Lakers and Utah. It was between Patrick Beverly from Utah for THT and Stanley Johnson from the Lakers. My initial thoughts in the moment was that this is not really a big deal. I mean, it's just Patrick Beverly, he's not no all-star. But when you look at it, when you think about it deeper, the Lakers need Patrick Beverly. This is an upgrade. If Patrick Beverly gives you nothing else, he will give you life, he will give you energy. And in all honesty, all NBA fans know that the Lakers lacked that last year. The Lakers needed life, the Lakers needed energy. I mean, we saw that in games, we saw that on defense, that, that they just looked disinterested. Patrick Beverly is a guy who's gonna bring it every game, day in and day out. You know, we know him for his perimeter defense, one of the best perimeter defenders out there. I mean, he's 34, he is older, but he's gonna cause some trouble every time. He's gonna apply pressure every time he's on the floor. Patrick Beverly fits what the Lakers wanna do. He fits what Darvin Ham's culture is gonna be, which is defense. And as we know with Patrick Beverly, he'll change the culture, be part of the change. I mean, we saw that with Minnesota last year. The year before, Minnesota was 28th in defensive ranking. And then once Patrick Beverly came, they moved all the way up to 13th. That's a big move. Um, they changed their identity. And with the Lakers, they were 21st last year in defensive ranking. They'll probably move up to top 15, maybe top 10. And offensively, Patrick Beverly is no bum either. I mean, he's not a shot creator of any of any kind, but I mean, he doesn't have to be. If anything, the Lakers need a guy like him who can just shoot. Last year, according to B-Ball Index, shout out to them, saw him on Twitter, Pat Bev shot 38.5% on catch and shoot and 41% from the corner. I mean, that's pretty huge. And that was a down shooting year for Patrick Bev. I mean, on average, he shot 34% from three overall. And that was a down year for him. And he really, I mean, he shot well from those spots, from the corner and on catch and shoot. And that's all he really needs to do. On the other hand, I mean, THT, he was in a position where he was pigeonholed into trying to be just a spot-up shooter. And that's just not his game. He's a shot creator, and going to Utah, I mean, it fits him well. He'll be in a position where he can fill his potential better. He'll find his game as a scorer. You know, I think that was a good trade for both sides. And like I said, Patrick Beverly is a veteran. LeBron is at a, you know, a point in his career where he's not, he's not supposed to be playing hard on defense. He needs to have that pressure taken off of him. He's gonna be a good defender regardless, but but the Lakers need someone that's gonna do the dirty work on defense, and that's Patrick Beverly. That's what they missed when they lost Alex Caruso, they lost Contavious Caldwell Pope. I mean, they lost that there. I think the Lakers realized that that when they chose THT over Alex Caruso, that that was the wrong move. And I mean, THT is not no bum. He just doesn't fit what the Lakers are trying to do, and Patrick Beverly does. So, does this change them into a for sure champion or not? Probably not. But they do get better. Patrick Beverly and Russell Westbrook, it's gonna be a sight to see. Patrick Beverly's a guy who's gonna hold players accountable. There's definitely gonna be some intense moments with them, but it'll probably be for the better. And I'm excited to see what Patrick Beverly adds to this team. He's a three and D point guard. He is 34, but I mean, he makes him tougher, more energetic. And you know, like I said, I'm excited to see. And on the other side, I mean, THT, like I said, he can find his game as a scorer there. They're in a rebuilding situation. He's a bright young player. He just didn't feel well what the Lakers were trying to do. And in other news, we just got word today that Chet Holmgren is going to miss the year this year due to a foot injury um, that he suffered in the Pro-Am in Seattle when he was trying to guard LeBron. And he just misstepped and now he's out. You know, it's just tough news to hear. I think we were all excited to see how Chet Holmgren was gonna translate his game, how he was gonna perform in the NBA level. I mean, he's a unicorn. He got, you know, he has, he's multi-talented, he can shoot the ball, he can bring up the ball, has some handle in him, and he's gonna be a defensive anchor for OKC. But we're just gonna have to wait. You know, it's just tough because you're gonna hear those toxic people on Twitter, all those people just gonna keep riding the narrative that his body won't hold up in the NBA, that, you know, he's not ready, that he will be a bust. And that's tough, because I'm from perspective that I wanna see this player grow. I wanna see what he will do at the next level. And he's, he could be a Hall of Fame talent, we don't know. You know, he has a high potential. And, um, you know, we just want to see him play. If you look on the brighter side, this will put OKC in a position to be to be bad. I mean, they were probably going to be bad regardless, but they with Chet Holmgren, they were probably going to be higher, maybe 11 seed, 12 seed. But now that he's gone, they'll probably be a bottom two team in the West, bottom three team in the West, which puts them in a position to get Victor Wen Benyama. I think how you say it, Victor Wen Benyama, something like that, the guy from France. 
But that puts them in a position to win the lottery again. And, you know, to see the Slim Towers, to see those two guys with Pokusheski, if he's there still, uh, the, the year after, it's going to be crazy. You know, they're going to be something to mess with. But, yeah, you know, sad news to hear Chet Holmgren go down. Um, because I was excited to see him fight for that Rookie of the Year with Paolo, with Jabari Smith, and others. But we're just going to have to wait. And when you look at it, I mean, it's not crazy, crazy news because we've seen players go down in their first year and have to wait for the rookie year to be in the next, like Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons. I believe I saw somewhere that it was LaMarcus Aldridge. All these players became all-stars still. So don't be too quick to call him a bust. You know, he has a lot of potential. He can use this opportunity to get stronger, get bigger, get his body more NBA ready. And, you know, we're just going to have to wait for his rookie year to be the next year. But, yeah. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to do more videos like this where I'm face-to-face -face having a conversation about NBA news. Obviously, there's not, not much going on. And this is pretty much the most news we've had in a while. So, you know, I hope, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as the season comes closer, we'll have more to talk about. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.